guys, thanks for joining us today. We would love to hear how God is using this ministry in your life. So please take a moment and send us your story in an email at amen at turningpoint.cc. And if God has used this ministry to touch you in any way, shape, or form, we want to encourage you to partner with us financially to continue to help us deliver God's Word around the world to people just like you. You can visit turningpoint.cc to find the giving option that works best for you. Thanks again for joining us, and I hope you enjoyed today's service on demand. Anybody thankful for, the, for His grace tonight? Oh, I thought everybody clap on that part right there. I'm thankful for His grace. I wouldn't be saved if it wasn't for grace. Come on, somebody. I know some people, then they get saved when they join a church. No, the only way you saved is by grace. Come on, somebody. I'm so thankful for His grace. His grace. If you got a Bible, if you would stand with me all over this room, Matthew chapter 22, uh, verse number 37. I'm going to uh, deviate. I know some of y'all see your face when I didn't say First John. I got you having a stroke tonight. Uh, but I, 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 need to, I need to deviate just a little bit tonight from 1 John. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not quitting on it, but here's, here's my dilemma. 1 John talks a lot about loving God, loving your neighbor, loving your brothers, loving your sisters, even loving the people that don't love you back. But I, I think we have a problem understanding what is love. What does that look like? And so, tonight I just want to teach uh, and, and, and speak to you on uh, it's, it's love on the inside that counts. And so I want to, I want to, just, I want to share with you just this nugget God downloaded into me and I hope it will bless you too. Matthew 22, verse 37, one verse of Scripture uh, to open up with. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Read it one more time for you. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Lord, in the name of Jesus tonight, I pray, Lord, that you would speak to us. I thank you, Lord, for this, this precious group of people that have assembled here tonight, Lord, under the name of Jesus to hear a word from you. And God, I pray these next few moments of time together that you would speak to us, you would encourage us, you would challenge us. But Lord, I pray most of all that love would not just be something that we have uh, on the outside, but Lord, it would be something that would be deposited deep in every area of our lives. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And could you just give him the best hand clap you've given him all morning long, or all night long? Come on, somebody. You may be seated. I want to I wanna go ahead and apologize to you in case I am not on my A game tonight because some of us, some of the staff, uh, after church Sunday, we hit an airplane and uh, we flew out to, uh, I don't even remember where we flew out to right now, Charlotte, North Carolina is where we flew out to to a church conference. And uh, y'all, we didn't sit down except but to eat a little bite to eat and we was learning, 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 learning and uh, got in it. Uh, I think 3 o'clock this morning, and uh, I tried to get me some sleep. My phone went off. I think it was at 6.30 this morning, and uh, somebody's mother was in a very uh, a bad fall and, and had to rush to Savannah. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm operating on a, a couple hours of sleep, and uh, I, I really, uh, I ain't seen my family in three days, and I miss them a little baby girl, but uh, I, I'm, I'm excited to preach tonight. Anybody come to learn something tonight? You coming to hear a word from God? So Jesus, uh, if you got one of them cool Bibles like I got where the words of Jesus are in red, Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. You need to understand, I, I think sometimes we as preachers take this for granted. And I, I got my midget board out here tonight. I don't got my uh, nice good one because they're still using it for, for uh, all the Easter planning we got going on. So I hope you'll be able to see it. Maybe you can take some notes so you won't forget this. But I think us as preachers, we sometimes take for granted uh, some things that we think you know that you probably don't know. 
Uh, under the Old Testament, you need to understand that there were 613 laws that God set out. God set out under the Old Testament 613 laws, and, and these were God's standard for righteousness. In other words, I, you had to fulfill these 613 laws to be in right standing with God, but the catch was God said if you broke one, you broke all of them. If you just got one of them wrong, you messed up and missed all 613 of them. And in the Old Testament, there was these guys that were called the Pharisees. And, and you see them introduced in the Old Testament. And you see Jesus having to deal with them in the New Testament. And their job was to teach about these 613 laws. They would teach uh, people like you and me who were not really, uh, really devout religious people who didn't really have a degree in, in theology. Their job was to teach you what these 613 laws were. And every single day of your life under the Old Testament, you would get up and you would try to fulfill these 613 laws. Every day of your life, your goal, your mission, your, your standard for your life was to try to get up and not break any of these 613 laws. But the truth is, the Bible said that the, 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 the law of the Old Testament was cursed. Why was it cursed? Because it was impossible for you and me to keep all 613 of these laws. It was impossible for any human being to ever fulfill it. And and so the Bible says that it's a curse because none of us could ever fulfill all 613 laws. If we were all honest today, we probably done broke some of these laws before we got to church tonight. Can I get a witness up in here? Oh, y'all ain't going to be real tonight. But if you were real honest, every single day of your life, you hadn't just broke one of them. You probably broke a couple hundred of them. And the Bible said if you broke one law, you broke all 106. 613 of the laws and so the Bible God knew it was impossible for you and I to ever fulfill all 613 laws and so before the foundation of the world God already had a plan I said he already had a plan to get you and I in right standing with him and so Jesus shows up on the scene and the Bible said he fulfilled all the laws of the prophets. I wish I could get a witness up in here. I said he fulfilled all 613 laws, never made a mistake, never lied, never cheated, never stole from nobody, never worshipped any other God but the one true and living God. Oh, I would. And so Jesus came... To fulfill all 613 of the laws. And so if I accept Jesus, I become righteous in the eyes of God. And so now every day when you and I get up, if you're a Christian, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you're not trying to love 613 laws. You're not trying to see if you can check off and get all 613 of them right. The only goal you have if you're a Christian every day you wake up is not 613 laws, but you just get up every single day and say, my mission is to love Jesus. My mission is to praise him. My mission is to clap for him. My mission is to give him the glory. My mission is to pray to him. Because if I love Jesus, that's all that matters. Come on, somebody. He fulfilled all 613 of the laws. I'm not going to be saved because of anything I've done. I'm saved because of what Jesus did. I'm redeemed because of what he did. I have peace because of Jesus. I have healing because of Jesus. I'm going to heaven because of Jesus. You got a smile on your face because of... Jesus. Come on, somebody. Everybody in the building, give God a praise. You ain't got to fulfill 613 laws. You just got to have one focus, and his name is J-E-S-U-S. -S. And if you'll just love him, everything's going to be all right. And so when I get saved 
and accept Jesus, I don't, I'm no longer just God's creation. I'm God's child. Oh, good God Almighty. You see, Jesus didn't just come to fix what Adam messed up because Adam never had, oh, good, I don't know if you can handle this tonight. Adam never had the privilege of being called God's child. He was just God's creation. But when Jesus came and fulfilled all 613 of the laws, he said, I'm not just going to fix what Adam messed up. I'm going to give you more after I fix this than Adam ever got all by himself. Adam was just God's creation. But whenever you accept Jesus, you ain't just God's creation. You are God's child. Come on, somebody. And if I'm God's child, That means I got access to what my daddy's got. And my daddy's got access to power. He's got access to deliverance. He's got access to more than enough. Come on, give your God a praise. You ain't just his creation. You are his child. And you have access to everything your daddy has in heaven and on the earth. Now, now religious people ain't going to like what I'm about to say, okay? Okay. And you will know they're religious if their hiney gets tight, what I'm about to say, okay? Salvation is a gift. I'm going to say that one more time because I wrote on the airplane, I'd get a big amen right here. Come on, somebody. Salvation is a gift. No, 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 no. I wrote big amen. Y'all, I was 23,000 feet in the air, so I know I heard God up there. I was closer to him. Come on, somebody. I said when salvation is a gift, it's a gift, it's a gift. It's not something you earn. It's not something that you can be good enough for. It is a gift. He just gives it to you. Come on, somebody. It's a gift. Touch your neighbor and say, salvation is a gift. Come on, touch him and say, salvation is a gift. So if salvation is a gift, religious people, Pharisees, want to make sure you're following all 613 of the laws. They're focused on what you're doing. And they say your relationship with God is determined by what you do. They say you're saved if you do what the Bible says. And they flip around and say, now if you mess up and you don't fulfill all 613 of these laws, you ain't saved. You might have grew up in some of them churches that said it's possible to be saved, but it's possible to to lose your salvation. Y'all get quiet up in here. I'm coming for you. They say if you hit your finger with a hammer and you cuss, you ain't going to heaven no more. You're going to hell. Y'all ever been in them kind of churches? They damn you to hell real quick. Y'all be quiet. Look straight ahead. I've been in them kind of churches. Come on, somebody. They would say if you thought the wrong thought, you were going to hell, that you just lost it. You were no longer saved, but you back in the line for hell. You'd be in, you'd be in towards in the heaven line at 9 o'clock in the morning, and by 9 o'clock at night, you back in hell. Come on, somebody. But that's not what salvation is. Salvation is not based on anything you do or I do because we can never be good enough for it to begin with. Salvation is a gift. And catch this, y'all. He, God gives you the gift of salvation when you accept it and you receive it. And what you do after the fact you receive the gift doesn't change the fact that you still have the gift. Come on. I wish I could get a witness up in here. Just because I received the gift of salvation and I go back out there and do something I wasn't supposed to do, it don't change the fact it's still a gift that God has given me. And a gift is, doesn't prove my love for God. It proves his love for me. Oh, good God, I'm out of here. The gift of salvation doesn't prove my love for God. It proves God loves me in spite of all my mess, in spite of all my failures, in spite of all my mistakes. God still loves you enough to give you the gift of salvation. Somebody give God a big hand clap of praise for salvation, and then we'll move on. Woo, I'm so thankful for the gift. Might not have got the shoes I wanted, but I got the gift of salvation. Might not got my new weave, but thank God I got me some salvation. Come on, somebody. Might not got a new car, but I got salvation. And I'm thankful for the gift. Because it doesn't prove my love for God. 
it proves his love for me. Y'all with me? We're building a foundation. We're going somewhere. So catch this. But then Jesus, in verse 37, said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. Jesus said, There has to come a time in your life as a Christian where you mature up and your love is no longer based on external things, but it's internal. Because I'm afraid we're living in a day today where we got a bunch of Christians who love God if the external factors around their life are just right. Y'all are going to be quiet up in here tonight. We love Him if everything's going good in the home. We love Him and will praise and will shout if all the bills are paid, if, if our health is looking good, if our favorite preacher's preaching our favorite sermon, if they're singing our songs, if everything's good in the external. Uh, many times when it comes to our relationship with God, it's based on external surroundings and not internal. But Jesus said, you got to get to the place in your life where your love for me and for your God is not based on everything around you but you got to get mature as a believer on the inside of you and say I don't care what's going on around me I'm gonna love my God I don't care if I get a bad report on the outside I love God on the inside I ain't nobody gonna help me up in here it's not based on external it's based on internal he said you got to get to the place in your life where you don't just love me if you're listening to your favorite preacher you got to love me in your heart, in your soul, in your mind. He says, when you get to the place in your life where it doesn't matter what's happening on the outside, your love for me doesn't change on the inside, he says, that's when you know you've matured with your love for God. Now, I'm going to say something on Wednesday night and I might get a little quiet. But we're living in a day today where if I'm not preaching on a Sunday or Wednesday, some of you won't come to church. Y'all be quiet, don't say nothing. That tells me your love for God is external and not internal. Because when you really love Him with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, we could have a dog up here saying, wiki, wiki, bow, wow, wow, we love Jesus. And you could still get a blessing from it. Come on, somebody. You need to get to the place in your life where it don't matter who's up here preaching the word. As long as they preaching the word, it ought to cause a love on the inside of you. Say, oh, I love him. I, it don't matter what's happening on the external. It's everything on the inside that matters. I love him with my heart, my soul, and my mind. Jesus said, you got to get to the place in your life where you move beyond external love and you move to an internal state of love that is not affected by things that happen on the outside. Now catch this. We about to do a little bit of word study. Touch your neighbor and say, we're going deep. 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 He said, love, and this tripped me out. I mean, maybe you don't read the Bible like I read it, but I kind of overanalyze things sometimes. He didn't just say, love your God. He didn't just say, love your Lord. He said, love the Lord, your God. And I got to thinking, okay, why didn't you just say, love God? That made sense. Why did you say, love the Lord your God? Why did you include Lord? Why did you include God? You need to understand that when you transliterate the word Lord and the word God from the Greek, Lord means to express 
will and right. And God means creator. Help me, Holy Ghost. You need to accept the fact and love me that I'm not just the creator, but you got to get to a place in your relationship with me where you love me enough where you realize everything in your life no longer belongs to you. It belongs to me. you got to get to the place in your life where your, your mind, your will, your emotions, your desires, your money, your family, your career, your likes, your dislikes, the things you want to do, the things you don't want to do. you got to get to the place in your life where you don't just love me, that I'm your God, that I'm just your creator, that I can just give you a blessing. But you got to get to the place in your love for me where you don't just love me for the fact that I can give you stuff, but you got to love me and get to the place where you don't just love me that I blessed you with things, but you got to realize I give you things and they're not really your things. I just give you the right to use them and do with whatever I command you to do with them. Y'all don't want to hear that. That's why it's quiet up in this building. But you need to realize that when, when you really, when you really let everything inside of you fall in love with God, Everything you have is no longer yours. You're no longer the owner. You're just the manager. He said, don't just love me that I'm the creator that can give you stuff. But you got to love me and get to the place where you realize I'm going to express my will and my rights over you and everything you have. And sometimes my will doesn't always agree with your will, but you got to come to the place to say, God, not my will be done, but your will be done. Can I tell you how you know when you really love God and He has everything inside of you? It's just not an external love, but it's an internal love. And every part of you is in love with Him. It's when you do things for God that you really don't want to do. And so then, He trips me out because He says, Love the Lord your God. And I want you to love me with all your heart. Your heart. So I began to, I began to do a little bit of study. I've been digging deeper and I began to think, okay, what's this heart thing about? It, it can't be just the thing that pumps blood over my body and your body. It's got to be something deeper. And the word heart, it means the origin of passions it's the bed of your desires it's where your passions come from you see passion creates motivation and motivation creates action if I have passion for something it's going to motivate me to do something about the thing I have passion for. Y'all with me? Passion. Jesus said, I want you to get to the place in your life where your love for me affects your passions. Because your passions create motivation and motivation creates action. Because if I don't have no passion for nothing, it, it means I'm not going to do nothing. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me up in there. If I don't love anything, I'm not going to do anything about the thing I don't love. But if I love it, my love is going to cause me to do something for the thing that I love. Oh, y'all ain't helping me up in this room. In other words... Jesus said, when you love me, 
Your love for me is going to get a hold to your passion. And your passion's going to transform into motivation. And then your motivation's going to manifest into some action. There's a difference between going to a church that has passion and going to a church that ain't got no passion. There is a difference between singing a song to God and praising God. There is a difference between just lifting your hands because they told you to lift your hands. And then there's a place where you get where it don't matter if they tell you to lift your hands or not. The passion for God is bubbling up inside of you. And passion turns into motivation. And you get so motivated thinking about the love of God and the grace of God that your hand goes up before they ever tell you to pick your hand up. Come on, somebody. I don't want to just be a Christian who just goes through the motion and does things to do it. That's religion. Religion is dead, boring, and ain't got no life in it. I want to be a kind of Christian who never loses passion for God, where he invades every area of my life, and I'm going to praise him, I'm going to worship him, I'm going to bless him, I'm going to hallelujah him, I'm going to say, Lord, I love you. I want to be a person who doesn't just go through the motions. I want to be somebody where the love of God has invaded my passion passions and it manifests in actions in my life if I am not doing anything it means I have no love I'm gonna sit down on that one if I'm not doing anything it means I don't love. So my question on the table for you tonight is not do you love God? But the real question is does all of you love God? I wonder what Sunday would look like if just all of us in this room, all of us just love God. Because you going to tell you how I know that probably all, all of us doesn't love God. Because we didn't bring nobody to church with us tonight. I wish y'all could see these looks I'm getting. Come on, somebody. I'm about to call the cops. Come on, somebody. Preach, I don't believe it. I ain't nervous. I'm just letting settle in what I just said. I wonder what praise and worship would look like Sunday if love for God got a hold of your passion. I know you're passionate about your football, but what about your Jesus? Well, I don't just worship that way. God didn't make me to worship Him and praise Him that way and make some noise. I... I find it hard to believe that God said if you won't praise him and make some noise, he'll go find some rocks that will make some noise and praise him. Come on, somebody. I wonder what the offering would have looked like tonight if we really, all of us, everything inside of us love God. I wonder who we would have not just passed by this week, but we would have witnessed to if everything in me loved God. I wonder who I would have prayed for this week if His love really controlled my passions. Preacher, I, I, don't, I just don't know if I believe this, Justin. I, this ain't making no sense. Well, John 21, 17. John 21, 17. Catch this. I'm going to back up to verse 15. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, do you love me? Yes, Lord. You know I love you. Came to church. I lifted my hand when they told me to lift my hands. I took notes when the preacher preached. 
When he said clap, I clapped. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Simon, do you love me? Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. I brought my kids to church. He answered, he asked him again, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Verse 17, the third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter finally understood it. He was hurt. Do you love me, he said. Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Verily, truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you were, where you wanted. But when you're old, you'll stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said, if you love me, there will be action behind that love. When I read 1 Corinthians 13, the Bible said that love is patient. Love is kind. In other words, love is not a feeling. Love is a verb. Love is an action. Love does something. Because if, I, if, if my passion produces motivation and my motivation manifests into action. And Jesus said, I got too many followers who tell me they love me with their mouth, but their life doesn't show the fact that they really do love me. He said, because if you really love me, I wouldn't have to tell you to feed some sheep. You'd already be out there feeding the sheep. If you really love me, you'd be witnessing to everybody you come in contact with saying, listen, I don't care whether you want to hear this or not. I need to tell you what Jesus has done for me. You'd be serving in the church. You'd be witnessing. You'd be coming to Bible study, worship, and praising, not having somebody to beg you on the stage to lift your hands. But if he really, if the love of God really got a hold to our passion and our desires and our and got a hold to us on the inside, y'all, this building could not contain everything God would do on the inside of it. I say in 2016, don't just raise up some people who hear about the love of God, but raise you up a mighty army at Turning Point Worship Center where the love of God gets a hold to everything on the inside of us and we get so passionate, we get so crazy, we get so on fire for God that we are doing something and showing and manifesting to this world that we really do love God. Simon, if you really love me, go feed my sheep. If you really love me, Simon, if, if, if I really, if the love you have for me has gotten a hold of your passions, why aren't you doing anything for me? And I think we have perverted this whole Christianity thing where you think you just come to church, hear a sermon, get some Bible knowledge, hear a few good songs, put some money in the plate, and you check off your little Christian duty and say, well, went to church this week. Learned a little bit more about the Bible. But you ain't living what you supposedly learned. I'm going to beat it in the ground just one more time. I'm going to move on. Come on, somebody. God never designed for you and I to fall in love with him and do nothing with that love. We were supposed to fall so in love with Jesus that we come to church and we're so passionate with our praise, so passionate with our worship that we make the Super Bowl at at January look like a cemetery. Come on, somebody. And we are so on fire for God that we're witnessing everywhere we go and there's not a service that goes by that somebody's not coming to church with us because we're so passionate about our our God. I dare you to raise your hand right here and just say, Lord, get a hold of my passions. 
get a hold of my passions. Let your love invade my passions. Because if he gets a hold to your passions, he's going to get a hold to your motivation. And if he gets a hold to your motivation, he is going to begin to produce some actions in your life because of your love for him. Faith without works is dead faith. Don't care how much makeup you put on it. Don't care how sophisticated you try to look. If your, if your faith is not producing some works, then the love of God has never gotten a hold to your passion and you have dead faith. Touch your neighbor and say, that hurt, that hurt. Ooh, that hurt. James chapter 4, we're closing, I promise. It's 756, we got to roll, but I just need to hit you with this one right here. James chapter 4, verse 6. Chapter 4. James chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. When you're ready for it, shout go. Okay, that's one person. When you're ready, shout go. James chapter 4, verse 1. Listen to this. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and you fight, and you do not have because you do not ask God. And even when you do ask, you don't receive. Why? Because you're asking me with wrong motives for the wrong stuff. That you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You know why you got so many fights and quarrels in your life? Because you ain't let him get a hold of your passions and your desires. And God said, I can't answer your prayers because you asking me for the wrong stuff. You asking me for the stuff the world's got. Because you still got your, your heart is still giving birth to the wrong passions. And God said, I can't answer your prayers because when you do pray, you asking me for junk you don't really need. And I love you enough that I ain't going to give you what you don't need. Whew, I got to praise him right there, y'all. I know you always pray the right prayers and you always pray the will of God. And you never ask Him for stuff you don't need. But I just got to give God a hand clap of praise right here for unanswered prayers. Come on, somebody. I'm thankful for stuff I asked Him to turn around. It didn't turn around. Come on, can I get a... I'm thankful for the doors I asked Him to open. He kept them dead bolted in front of my face. I wish I could get away. Oh, some of y'all want to praise God for the person you tried to beg Him to let you marry and you seen Larry two days ago. You ought to thank God he didn't send you Larry but he sent you Rico come on come on somebody give your God a praise for them unanswered prayers give him a prayer why because he knew your passion wasn't right he knew you was desiring the wrong thing but he loves you enough that he'll tell you no so he can get you what you really need look at verse 4 you adulterous people. Don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? God said you cheating on me because you're giving your passions to the world when you should be giving it to me. Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. But do you think Scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? He said, you've been cheating on me because you haven't given me all of you. And Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Move beyond the love that's based on the external. And get to a place on the inside of you where all of you loves all of Him. 
in spite of what's happening around me and around you. Anybody want to go and mature in your love with God tonight? Come on. Is that you? Because until you get this kind of love, you can't really forgive your enemies. Until you get this kind of love, you can't walk up in Walmart and witness to people who give you the stinky eye. But if you can ever mature in your love for God and let everything within you love Him, He gets a hold to your passions. He gets a hold to your thoughts. He gets a hold to your mind, your will, your emotions. And your love is producing something. Your love is causing you to perform works for your God through your faith. He said, that's when you know you've matured in your faith and you love me. Not just based on what I can give, but based on my will for your life. So everyone stand with me all of this room before we go. And just for 60 seconds, now this is going to take you a lot longer to live out. But could you just throw your hands up to your God? And could you ask Him to mature your love for Him? Come on. It's a bold prayer. Mature me. More than this world to me. I wouldn't trade you for silver. tonight in the name of Jesus Lord I baptize every man and every woman in this room I baptize them with passion for you God that our love for you would get a hold to our passions and our passions would produce actions don't let us no longer be Christians who come in here and just go through the motions because that's just dead religion. But let our passion produce actions and let us have an inside love in every area of our life. We will love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, and with our souls. In Jesus' name we pray. If you got some out the word, can you give him a praise? I love you. We'll see you Sunday.